Hey guys, my name is Jeff Rojas and I'm here with b &H today with... Tom Cubby with Sony. Amazing, and we're here today to look at an entirely new camera. What are we looking at? We're looking at the PXW FX9, Jeff. What's new about this body? What's new about this line? What are we doing here? Well, for uh, those who are familiar with our uh, PXW FS7 series, we have taken a lot of that technology and then started merging that with technology from our Venice series camera as well as our very successful Alpha 7 series and combine some of those technologies to make the FX9. Let's talk tech specs because I know that's something that everyone, everyone wants to hear first. What, what do we have here? Uh, this is a newly designed full frame 6K sensor. Uh, it is our Exmor R sensor, so it's uh, back illuminated. And uh, it's got some amazing technologies built into it. The, the camera now has a dual ISO mode. So we have both 800 and 4000. So typically you'd say in a normal lighting environment, you'd be going to that 800 ISO. And for those lower light, more challenging scenes, you can switch over to your 4000. So I heard that there are two shooting modes on this camera. What are those? Absolutely. Well, it is a full frame sensor, so one would expect full frame capabilities. So that is one of the modes. So you have your full frame mode. And of course, a lot of folks still like shooting in Super 35. So that will be available as well. Frame rates will be, uh, we'll say we go, we'll start with HD. Uh, so full frame HD all the way up to 60p. So your 24p, 25, 30p, and 60p. In uh, Super 35 mode, you'll have up to 30p initially, and then you'll have 60p with one of those firmware upgrades that we discussed earlier. There's still one more spec on the full frame side. Okay. So on the DCI spec, so we talked about HD and UHD. Um, those were the numbers for that. In uh, the DCI spec, currently in full frame, there, there won't be anything initially available, but both up to 30p and then the up to 60p will be available as firmware upgrades separately. So we've explored the, the full frame capabilities of the camera. Now I know there's a ton of people watching this video just to know about Super 35. Tell me more about that. Sure. Uh, simply put in uh, Super 35 mode, both in HD and UHD, you'll have all the way up to 60p right out of the box. And then a future firmware upgrade. Sounds like a uh, repetitive thing, but there'll be some of those coming, uh, both in the DCI spec for up to 30p and then again in up to 60p. Those will be available through firmware upgrades. In terms of color spaces, what are we looking at here? Well, uh, if you're familiar at all with the FS7 series, we kind of went a similar route in that you're, you're essentially getting two cameras in one. Getting one side of the camera where you're in that Cine EI mode and you select your uh, monitor LUTs for on set, for viewfinder and so forth, and then you do your grading in post. And then on the other side of the camera is your custom mode. Uh, but we've added a little bit of, a little surprise. You know, people love what we've done with the FS5 M2 along the lines of the Venice Color Science and the expertise used in that. So we brought some of that same expertise into the FX9 and we're calling that S-Cinetone. And uh, that will be a, we'll say default setting right out of the box. You pull the camera out. There's a uh, gamma and color space already set up for you. So without being an expert color grader, you get this beautiful color imagery, beautiful natural skin tones, nice soft roll off in your highlights. That's incredible. Uh, in terms of autofocusing, I heard some improvements that are happening here. What are we doing? Oh, the autofocus is amazing. So we've covered about 96% vertically and about 94% horizontally with our phase detection autofocus system. So if you're, again, familiar with the different technologies that Sony has, our Alpha 7 series has been well known for the phase detection capabilities. So. This camera now has phase detection built right into the sensor. Uh, there's different modes of operation, so you're not just getting a system that focuses fast and accurately, but you have parameters that you can play around with. So if I want 
a slow focus to emulate more of that kind of cinematic rack focus, or if I want that super fast focus for shooting sports, when I want to switch off quickly. Uh, on the other side of it, I can lock on a subject. Maybe you're focusing somebody walking through a crowd and you don't want the camera hunting just for the next person. You can have it lock on a subject, or again, back to sports, maybe race cars, you want that focus to switch off quickly from when one race car leaves the, the frame and you wanna grab that next car, it's gonna do it quickly. And there's in, in between settings as well. So it's not all or nothing, there's all of that in between as well. That's awesome. What does this look like in terms of recording? We're talking about 6K here. Is this gonna be something that is memory intensive as an example? How does it compare to previous models? Right, well, we're still using the same codex. Yeah. So we have XABC I, XABC L, uh, still have the MPEG for our, you know, legacy customers that way as well. Initially, you can expect the same kind of results, the same media. So it is our uh, very reliable uh, XQD memory, which of course has data protection built into it. What improvements are we seeing overall on the outside in terms of hardware and, and being able to handhold and being able to see what's going on sure. behind the camera? Well, part of what I do is I'm always interfacing with our customers out in the field at trade shows and different events. And we take that feedback from our customers and we send it up the chain and, and it makes it all the way back to Japan, believe it or not. And, uh, and they're very responsive. Uh, we'll say, for instance, the Smart Grip. A lot of folks were like, well, we like these, the, the Smart Grip better on the FS5 because it's a little bit smaller. It's got that wraparound hand grip, so it's more reliable in terms of like I'm running and gunning and I don't want to lose the camera off my shoulder. So we actually implemented that grip onto the arm of the FS7. So you've got that nice comfort in using the grip. On the opposite side, a couple of things I really love is we added um, two additional pots for adjusting the audio. So the camera has the capability to record four channels of audio. Previously on the FS7 series, you had to go into the menu to adjust channels three and four. Here you've got the pots right there, one, two, three, and four, right at your fingertips. There's a quick dial now. So one of the big things was being able to adjust white balance without having to go into the menu, right? So manually dial it in. So you can do that now. You can dial in your white balance, you can dial in a shutter speed or a gain slash ISO. Uh, hit one of those buttons, just turn the smart dial and you can see the changes happening immediately on screen. And if that's not enough for you, there's the direct menu access that was so popular on the FS5 hand grip. So it's got both of those ways. And it's always nice to have options, right, when you're, when you're making those. Sometimes it's easier to do it on the camera side when you're on a tripod. Other times it's easier when it's on your shoulder to just use the smart grip for those kind of things. Uh, what I also love is the uh, variable ND. That is one of my favorite features that um, Sony's ever developed. And so we are, the again, the first ones to ever do it on a full frame sensor, variable ND. So it's two to seven stops of ND. You kick it in uh, with a small button touch so you don't have to actually turn a dial anymore. And then the auto ND button is actually right there in the same place as all the other N, uh, ND filter adjustments. So you can do a manual adjustment, plus or minus. You can switch it over to variable, dial it in, or you can hit the auto button and do things like, uh, what do they call that? Uh, depth of field pull. It's incredible, and what I love about that is if you are on the go, you're about to take your shot, it creates a more stable experience for the shot that you're trying to take. Oh, speaking of stability, yes. Um, so we got a lot in there with the sensor, the Exmor R technology, and the variable ND, so we, we wanted to still have a technology, a way to stable the image for the, those run and gun shooters. So we did a little bit different. What we're doing is putting the image stabilization information in the metadata. And then currently, we're gonna use our Catalyst Browse software is gonna be able to take that information and quickly process that about 600 times faster than what you would see in a normal NLE environment for image stabilization. And what's great is maybe one shot you like with that shakiness, right? But if you already had image stabilization already built in and you turned it on, like once it's recorded, it's recorded. You can't kind of turn it back off. This gives you that flexibility to have it on or off in any given shot. 
That's amazing. Um, in terms of, okay, so we're talking about stability there. What about viewing your footage? What improvements have you guys improved ah. on that? Uh, we actually have uh, an improvement with our LCD panel. Our new panel is actually a 1280-720 panel. So much higher resolution, uh, especially for 4K. You know, it's always important to have that sharp panel. And what we also did was redesign the EVF tube so that the sunshade and the tube are just one piece. Previous model is like, oh, I want to use the sunshade. Then I got to unclip it. And then now, I, oh, next shot, I want to use the eye tube. You don't have to do that anymore. You just flip it up, push the little button, and it slides right off, very much like uh, most of our ENG cameras do today. So much easier. What about lens? What are you guys shipping the camera with if you guys are shipping the camera with it? Well, there'll be an option. So you'll be able to get the cameras, as always, with or without a lens. So the K package signifies the lens. The non-K package, no lens. Uh, the lens will be uh, the SELP 28 to 135. So it's a power zoom. Uh, the performance on the zoom is actually very smooth because our interface for our, our uh, smart grip is now a multi-cable, which has a very fast uh, response with the camera. So I've tried it myself and I love how it ramps up smoothly and ramps down smoothly. It's amazing. And what are we talking to? We also talked about some improvements here off ah, set. Ah, yes. So what are we looking at? We have the uh, XDCA FX9. Okay. It has uh, the ability to have a drop-in wireless system right across the top. There, so that little panel comes off. Both of our uh, DWX and UWP systems both fit in there. So you can uh, have actually now four channels of wireless audio if you choose to do so. So you can use two using the existing hot shoe interface into using the drop-in. Or you can choose to go two and two with the XLRs. So you have actually a combination of six different ways to bring audio in and you could choose four of those. On the camera body itself, we put the time code and Genlock interface right on the body. So you don't have to get the new XDCA just to operate a multi-camera shoot and have your time code and Genlock. If you're familiar with the XDCA FS7, it, was capable of a 12-bit uh, raw output. We're kind of up in our game now. Okay. So we're talking about 16-bit linear raw. That's amazing. Output. Um, of course, there's always a firmware upgrade involved with that. So um, those kind of things will be uh, available at various times. But yeah, we're going 16-bit linear raw. For someone who's never shot 16-bit before, what's the difference between 12-bit and 16? If uh, you look at the basic numbers, it doesn't seem like a whole lot, okay, 12 versus 16. But the actual numbers are going to kind of blow you away. So at 12-bit, you're looking at 4,096. And at 16-bit, you're looking at over 65,000 shades. So it's a tremendous amount of information, a lot more if you do simple math, 65 over 65,000 versus over 4,000. Anybody who's watching this video at the end of the day is looking to invest in this for a solution. Where are you guys positioning this in the marketplace compared to your competitors? What makes you guys the best? And I, I have my own opinions, obviously, I'm with you guys, but sure. what makes you the best? I'll start off with uh, talking about an area that I didn't actually cover yet. Yeah. Quite important. And that's our, um, that's our one mount, the E-mount, right? And, and that's really Sony's message is, one mount. If you look at um, the Venice camera and how, su how successful it's been in the marketplace, its native mount is an E-mount. And you have our extremely popular and successful Alpha 7 series, which is E-mount. And then you have your FS5s and FS7s and now the FX9, all using E-mount. So, that lends to so much flexibility when, when you're talking about um, lens choices, right? And because when you have all those choices, that's what allows you to, you know, put a, uh, a B4 mount lens on a camera or uh, some kind of specialty lens. Now, speaking of lenses, is there something you want to show me? Ah, yes. It's kind of hidden here in the back, <laughs> but uh, we are, uh, 
Also introducing a line of cinema lenses coming soon to a theater near you. Uh, this particular one is a 16-35 T3.1. And you got this little piece over here which is actually a servo, which is removable. So if you want to use it in that traditional manual fashion, you can do that or utilize it. There is a switch for auto and servo, so um, certainly can utilize that. And of course, it's E-mount, and Sony's really come on strong in terms of being a manufacturer of lenses. You know, our um, extremely popular uh, G Master series, they're incredibly sharp and um, have a wonderful bokeh, which is going to be nice in this uh, combination with a uh, full frame sensor camera. So you have lens choices, high quality lens choices, pretty much the world of lenses at your fingertips. You guys have created a movement, not just a, a technology, it's literally a movement. Yeah. It's an investment into a lifestyle at this point. Mm -hmm. That's what I love so much. That's why we're the best. <laughs> I like that answer. So with that, um, I want to thank you for being here and giving us a first look at the FX9 and, and all the accessories and the technologies that you guys are investing in the future. And I want to thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys have an incredible day. Take care.